so I suggest you we begin. So welcome on board. Um, we are ready for takeoff, so please fasten your seatbelt and let's go. So to introduce myself, my name is Alain Bernard and I work uh, at the design office at Airbus. So we are a few team of uh, software developers uh, integrated in a big team of aircraft engineers and Today, I propose you to tell you our story, the story of the build of an Eclipse-based application to change the life of uh, our engineers. So to do that, I let present you the team, the two teams. The first is the aircraft engineers. Their job is to make this and not to deal with obscure configuration files, obscure tools mechanism. He want, they want only to make planes and to understand the physical laws and the physical behavior of our aircraft. The second team is the software team, which contains an Eclipse enthusiast. And this team will try, at least, to answer to the problem of the aircraft engineers by providing them the needed tool to accomplish their mission. So the first step is to, together, discover the wishes and the problems the engineers have for years as they didn't have problems that they didn't solve before. First step is to have a multi-platform and unified workbench because on Windows we make reports, we make Excel, PowerPoints, Word, it's our deliveries to our customers and on Linux we make calculation, thousands of calculation on many tools and the bridge between Windows and Linux is difficult to do and it's <coughs> important to have an integrated workbench, a multi-platform workbench when we can integrate tools that can communicate with each other and to provide a workbench that the user can launch at the morning, close at the evening, state their day, their preferences and so on. Obviously, Eclipse can bring that to us. And as an aircraft is a complex system, we have many tools, uh, tools for each study we want to perform in the life of the aircraft or in the development of the aircraft. And so we have to reach the, uh, the, the capability to install the tools in the, in the user's workbench uh, without requiring a manual installation by the software team at each tool we want to integrate. So for that, we can build a P2 repository to integrate the tool in the workbench and the user can install them, update them without requiring the support of the software team. In addition, it's interesting for us that we can develop and integrate the, the tool after one after each other, step by step, and so the user can enjoy the platform mechanism, the Eclipse power now and don't wait for five years to have all the workbench completely developed to uh, start to work with it. Another big concern is the knowledge transmission between our experts that design aircraft for years and you, young newcomers, young engineers that arrive in the, in the company and discover the job they will perform, perform for years. And for that, we have plenty of documentation, but this documentation is difficult to, to read, to understand and to find in all the documentation we produce each year. So with the Eclipse platform and the integrated help, we can integrate the manuals and deliver them the same way than, the, than we deliver our tools by providing the user the, an interactive help, a contextual help whenever they are they can press F1 to reach the help mechanism and we can go further by integrating the cheat sheets mechanism and providing step-by-step -step guides for guiding them in the first time they launch the tool, they use the tool and they perform a physical study. In addition, when the user installs the tools, when he had read the manual or probably not, uh, we can he can launch the tools and for that he have to choose between thousands and thousands of physical parameters, parameters that have an impact of the performance of the plane, um, 
the weight of the plane and so on. Physical parameter, atmospheric condition and so on. And for that, he has to choose so between the parameters, parameters that he can use only in certain conditions with certain hypotheses. And it's difficult for an engineer to learn all these parameters by heart. It's quite impossible. And all the parameters are stored in the database that is awful to read uh, by hand. So with simple content assist mechanism in Eclipse, we can provide filtering of the database and so, and so the user can choose the physical parameters he wants to play on to make the calculation. We have also UG and raw data files. Uh, for example, these files, 20,000 lines of numbers, impossible to read, um, and, but we have to deal with because this file contains all the data about the aircraft. And we have some tools to extract values and so on, but these tools are quite not usable simply. And we cannot change the file format because we deliver aircraft. We deliver aircraft to our customers. And so we don't have the right to change the data format. It has to be the same during all the life of the aircraft. So we have to deal with. And for that, we have to find a way. Hopefully, uh, we are in Java. We have plenty of open source libraries. So we can mix a little of Java native access to call the native code, some funny Google collection to deal with the data, and some charting library to create plots. And so the ugly file display in several milliseconds in an interface with beautiful and relaxing blue toolbars with Eclipse Forms. The advantage of Eclipse Forms is that we can unify the look and feel of our application, and we can uh, have the same interface for all the tools. The user will always retrieve the look and feel they have in all the tools. Finally, they, the user deal with the input data format, with the input of the calculation. They deal with the UG and raw data files. They read the parameters and launch the tool, and they, and they obtain results. Thousands of results, say the thousands of calculations. And we have to visualize them in an efficient way. And today, the fact is that the calculation runs on Linux, the, and they get the file on Linux, get them on Windows, open it on Excel, see that the calculation crashed, we pass the calculation on Linux, we, we do the same thing with Excel, and so on. So it's error prone, it's long manual handling, and it's inefficient as possible. So we have to provide them the way to visualize their data with the functionalities of visualization that they have in Excel, that they use in Excel. And we can obviously not do that with a simple SWT table. Hopefully, we have the next gen de generation toolkit, and they can use, we can use the net table, which is tricky to understand, tricky to, under, to develop, but when we have understood how it works, we can have in a few lines of code, grouping, sorting, filtering, freezing the colon, and so on, all the functionalities they used in Excel, in the net table, but we go further because we are in the Eclipse platform and we can integrate our visualization table in the platform mechanism, for example, easy comparison of the input files. And so all the manual operations they do before, they can do them in a few click, few click in our platform. So the process of launching, learning the functionality of the tools is greatly improved the manual operations are reduced, and the user starts to understand that your platform may, will maybe change the way they work. But you have also to convince people that Eclipse is a good solution. There is plenty of frameworks in the world, plenty of frameworks that do the same thing, and you have to convince people that Eclipse, the solution you propose, is the best solution. For that, we introduce a new character, the chief. The chief has to be con convinced because he owns your budget, and so he owns the power. So we have to convince him that Eclipse is a good solution, not even not because 
he's against Eclipse or Java. We are aircraft engineer. He may didn't know what, is, what Eclipse is, but you have to convince him that will, he will not spend his budget in another framework that will disappear in two years. It's important to notice also that you may not have also only the chief to convince, but resistant users that think that VI is better than Eclipse. Um, developers that come for, have, that have different background and also chief of the chief. The simple point is hopefully uh, the simplest point about development cost because we re you rely by using Eclipse on a stable code base of no more than 60 million lines of code, uh, more than 70 projects, um, sustained by, by hundreds of commuters all around the world, sustained by major software companies. So it's easy to see that you will spend more money on your business core than on the obscure kernel mechanism or low level mechanism if you rely on a powerful platform like this. Another fairing point is that Eclipse is open source. Companies may be afraid of open source because they imagine that by doing open source things, all our business code will be open source too. But hopefully, we have the Eclipse Foundation and its Eclipse public license. So our business code is protected and the EPL grants us the right to build our commercial application on top of Eclipse projects. The foundation has also its world-class intellectual property strategy, which grants the IP cleanness of our product. And finally, we can also contribute to Eclipse projects that are interesting for us without compromising the integrity of our business core, of our business code. Finally, we develop aircraft and aircraft fly during 40 years. And during 40 years, you have to be able to reproduce the result to justify the calculation you do during the development of the aircraft. So you have to rely on a platform that will be able to run the calculation in 40 years. And for that, we have the Polarsys initiative. In Polarsys, the goal is to provide very long-term support for Eclipse-based products in, this, in the scale of aeronautic or aerospace developments. It's also to provide open innovation between partners because at Airbus, we have the same concern that in Airbus Defense and Space, in Thales, and so on. And so we can all work together to have open innovation to build projects that are useful for our companies and improve the interoper interoperability between our companies by Bringing the, by using the same data format, by bringing the same tools to our user, and so on. Finally, Eclipse provides you also the release train. It's very predictable. So each year, you know that at the end of June, the last Wednesday, you will have the new major version of Eclipse that will be released, and you can, you can prepare it. You can prepare it with a few milestones in the years. You can test the update of your product. The, you can test the new functionalities. And so in a few days or weeks after the annual release, you can provide your new tool to all our users and provide them features developed by developers all around the world. Also features that, for example, the splitting of the editor of the dark time, for example. For example. But a so powerful framework has also weakness. And in Eclipse, its weakness is the weakness is also the learning curve. Because when you have developers who are new on the, your project, it's, it will be difficult to train them to understand the RCP mechanism. And not, also the, not only the developers, it may be also difficult for the users. Because for developer, commercial trainings are made now for E4 mechanism. But we, because you develop an IDE plugin, you still rely on 3.x mechanism. So they cannot take all the power of E4 mechanism, and you may still explain them the 3.x mechanism you are still using in your application. 
For users, it's complicated because you deploy your software to users that never heard of Eclipse before, that never seen or used Eclipse before. And so you have to explain them what a workspace is, what must they create project, what, what they have all the Eclipse mechanism in their workbench. You have to explain them that the gain of, of basing your Eclipse products, your products on Eclipse is more, more important than the, the drawbacks. Finally, after months or years, it depends, you have convinced all people that relying on Eclipse for your products is a good solution. And the people start to understand that they can you ask you more and more complex things to be integrated in our, your application. For example, is that we have asked you to integrate all the tools they use in the platform to have the beautiful user interface and so on. And for that, you have to be efficient because you have not a huge budget and you have to quickly integrate your tools in the platform. And for that, you can use Eclipse modeling framework because you will have quick code generation, but also powerful tooling like um, addition of your models, comparisons, storing in databases, and so on. But it may be difficult for developers to learn, okay, the RCP mechanism, but also the EMF mechanism because EMF generates a lot of code and it can be difficult to understand the first time. It's can be also difficult to choose between all frameworks of the EMF galaxy and to which the one that targets your needs. For example, presentation frameworks, you can use EEF or the EMF forms and you have to choose the framework that is most adapted to your needs. But we saw a powerful framework, you, may, you will make also dreams a reality. For example, look at this scientist. He has dreams for years to display his business processes, his tool chains in a powerful way, in a diagram editor. And so you can use new EMF mechanism to integrate your business processes in serious, for example, and so you can have in a few clicks, in a few hours, a fully featured uh, Eclipse workbench to uh, display your business processes and it open new doors. But you will face, while integrated new things in your platform, you will face also problems. For example, the use of numerical Python libs, uh, which are po powerful numerical libraries, widely used in your domains, because they have plenty of functionality and you cannot integrate directly in your GVM because, for example, Giton is, isn't able to run them because that are C-based libraries and so on. And you have to find an easy way to exchange data to make the two worlds communicate with each other between the Java world and the Python world. So maybe a solution can be to use and to generate interface files with Axelio, another EMF frameworks, but it may exist another way. So if anyone, anyone uh, here has an idea, you can say it. And so you will have also your Excel fan that is back and who wants to plot graphs. And plotting, plotting needs that generics in your domains, but we don't have in the Eclipse Foundation a generic plotting workbench that is ready to use and fully featured as of today. So we have to find partners to develop it because redeveloping a so powerful workbench is too expensive for a single department, of, for a single team, or even for a single company. So you may have to find partners inside your companies or outside the companies, like, for example, partnerships with working groups and because of the modularity of the Eclipse platform you can integrate uh, open source code, uh, build business code on top and take part, take benefits of all the work done 
uh, together in your project. So finally, uh, Eclipse brings to us first the simplicity, simplicity in our processes because we can solve problems that we have for years, for example, knowledge management, user trainings, or interoperability of components inside the company. It brings us also the speed, speed uh, in our developments because we have code generation, we have powerful API, we have a ready to use environment, and finally, agility, because we can answer to users' feature requests and use iterative development cycles to gather their feedbacks. For example, with Sirius, you can develop in live the diagram editor and provide the user immediately the look and feel they want and do in live development. It's bigger than the weakness of the platform, as I said before, the learning curve, but also the need to improve the platforms about science problematics because even, it, even if Eclipse do all the things you want, it's primarily a software development environment. So we, have, so we have to improve it in the term of science needs, plottings, numerical libraries, and so on. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, feel free to, to ask.